Hello everybody, Rogue Fox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft video. If you haven't heard the news, version 1.6 is now out for Bedrock Edition. That's right, version 1.6 was released this past Tuesday, and they gave us some new features. That big one being the Phantom, and also Barrier Blocks. Those are some new features that they've given us, and the main ones. Now there are other bug fixes and things like that, especially some changes to mobs. Uh, we'll cover that briefly. But mainly what I want to talk about are the phantoms and the barrier blocks, the new features of this update. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop up the change log and let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. So it says, new features, phantom mobs will now spawn in the night skies if a player hasn't slept in over three in-game days. Please note that there is a bug currently where phantoms may not swoop down. We will be fixing this bug as soon as we can. So what that means is that if we stay up for three days straight, three in-game nights, in-game days it says, uh, the phantom will spawn. So right here I do have a phantom that is trapped. I don't know why the phantom is glitched in the corner right now. That That's very interesting. Uh, I would spawn one, but it's just going to turn into a crispy critter. Yeah, so it's going to go up. They actually fly up very high. So that is... Very frightening. I mean, if you are just minding your own business, doing things, and you forgot to sleep for three days, uh, yeah, you will have these guys flying right above your head, waiting to swoop down on you. Now, they do say that there is a little bug, I guess, with them not swooping down, so they say they will fix that. To go along with that note of the phantoms may not be swooping down, uh, Aubrey Norris put out a tweet on Tuesday saying, 1.6 is rolling out to Minecraft today, folks. It includes phantoms, finally but our phantoms are not feeling quite aggressive enough yet. So we will tune that up in the next patch. Please let us know what you think. Uh, okay, so uh, apparently the Minecraft team doesn't think that the phantoms are aggressive enough. So I'm very interested to see what they're going to be doing here. Now it is turning, turning nighttime here. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and switch this over to... Survival? I just want to see what they do. Let's see if they swoop down. Let's go ahead and... Okay. Uh, maybe I didn't... I should have given myself more eggs. So there was a hit. So you can see if you are not sleeping for three days how high they fly up. And I really hope they swoop down. And it doesn't look like this one is going to swoop down. Well, I guess everything can't go as planned. I was hoping that thing would attack me from the sky. But it did attack. So we did see that and how that would look. And that is pretty scary, especially if that's happening at night and you're not expecting it. Now, the next thing about the phantom is the drop. So it drops a phantom membrane, and that is very important because that has a couple of things that you can do with it. So first of all, uh, it's good for repairing elytra. So before, whoops, we want that in our inventory right down here. So if you come over to an anvil, now before it used to be... To repair your elytra, you would need your elytra, you would need leather, but that doesn't work anymore. So to repair your elytra now, what you need to do is get a phantom membrane, place it right there, and then you can see it's going to repair our elytra. Now, if this thing is fully broken, you will need four phantom membranes, so it restores about basically 25% of the health of the elytra or its durability. So that's how you would do that. That's one feature of it. Now, another feature of it, are the potions that you can make with it. So you can make brand new potions and I'm standing on the wrong side here. So let's go ahead and open this up. So what we can do with the phantom membrane is create the potion of slow falling. And then of course, if you add some redstone, you can extend the duration to four minutes. And then of course you can make uh, the splash potion and lingering potions respectively. All right, so we are gonna do a little test with this potion of slow falling. So I've built up as high as Minecraft will let me build in Bedrock Edition, which is 256 blocks. So this obviously is gonna gonna kill us upon impact. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna drink this potion, and let's see what this does. I hope this. I hope we still survive this. So let's go ahead and. Okay, so we do. We are definitely falling a little bit slower. Probably do a couple spirals up around this thing too while we're at it. So that looks like it's actually pretty fun. I'll, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that we're not going to take damage when we land. But we're going to go ahead and test this out. So this is a little test and it looks like we're going to be just fine. Sweet. 
So, no damage from 256 blocks up. As long as we have... Oh, this is a glass bottle now, we don't need that. As long as we have our potion of slow falling, we can fall from very high distances, and we will not take any fall damage. So that is a very useful feature, and that is also something that is only possible using the phantom membrane. Now the next new feature is the barrier block. So you can see right here, I am keeping this phantom contained by using barrier blocks. So if I go ahead and take off barrier blocks like that, if I just move the next item over, you can't see them. So for those of you who make adventure maps or creator maps or anything like that, and you want to prevent players or mobs from going to a certain area, all you do is put up barrier blocks. So you can see it's completely invisible, but then when we go to barrier blocks here, you can see I have this whole thing surrounded, so there's no way that this thing can get out. So that's very cool. Now if we take a look at the change log, it says barrier blocks. Great for map makers to limit players and mobs to certain areas of the world, just like I said can be placed in creative mode and are invisible in survival and adventure modes. And then barrier blocks can only be obtained using commands and do not appear in the creative inventory. So for those of you in creative mode, just like I am right now, what it's saying is that when you're in here, you're not gonna find the barrier block and it's only given by command. So that's a very easy command. All we have to do is open up our command right here and I already have this set in. So if we look right down here, it's give at S. So that's gonna give it to me barrier and all you do is press enter and then there we go it says it gave barrier one to rogue fox and then now we have three barrier blocks i've done this three times already and this is very cool so it just places down like regular blocks and it just follows you around also which is kind of cool and yeah you can just stack them on top of each other like that and like it said you can prevent players or mobs from going to certain areas so this is especially useful for those of you who want to create adventure maps so you can have mobs or anything like that maybe you don't want players to go out of the area that you don't want them to does that make sense uh yeah you want them to stay on the course that you have set so that is where barrier blocks come in handy so that was a brief overview of the new features if you can call that brief now i know once you open minecraft after the update it gives you a little screen uh, showing you the changes that they made in 1.6.0 also promoting of some new content in the marketplace which actually looks pretty cool i might have to check that out uh, but it does give a summary of everything i just said i just thought it'd be better to give you a visual of those changes now there's quite the extensive list to go along with this change log i'm not going to go over everything but i will leave a link in the description below so you can check it out for yourselves but there are changes to certain things uh, like the menus uh, personal game modes uh, is now set to the default game mode option when first joining a world so i guess that means if your default setting is survival or creative it's going to be like that once you join a new world really wish they would have added spectator mode but uh, you know hopefully in a later update uh, fixes to crashes and performance issues general things gameplay items and then let's just stop here for just a moment and look at mobs so i'm going to go ahead and pop that up on the screen now, the first thing I see on the mobs list is Guardians no longer attack fish, which is really, really sad because if you've seen the episode where I was going into the Ocean Monument uh, in my survival series, I was pointing out that the Guardians were attacking the fish. All we saw were bones and fish just floating on the top of the water, and I had mentioned that would have been a really cool fish farm, but I guess I'm not going to be taking, taking a go at that because they fixed that issue. So... I don't know why they would have fixed that, maybe because the Guardians can now direct their attention towards the player, I guess, instead of the fish swimming around. Maybe, I don't know. And then, just going down the list here, uh, everything, Drown now have a much easier time attacking players that are swimming above them. Again, uh, looks like Minecraft wants to make the game a little bit more difficult, which is totally fine. That's totally understandable. We do need a little bit of a challenge, we just don't want Drowned just being there not attacking us, I suppose. Fixed strays and skeletons having trouble leaving the water to attack players. Again, another thing to address to make the game a little bit more challenging, a little bit more difficult. And then, blazes now attack snow golems. Elder Guardians now drop wet sponges when killed. I do, I can attest to that. When I took out the Elder Guardian, it did drop a dry sponge. Which I said didn't make sense because I was underwater. You know, the whole, you know, you're underwater, how are you going to drop a dry sponge? And then the one that stuck out to me at the very end of the list, uh, besides the first item on the top of the list, was used chests can now be equipped to mules and llamas. 
So that was a huge issue. I actually did a video on that probably a couple of weeks ago showing how uh, used chests couldn't be placed on the mules and llamas and then the little process to make that happen. But pretty much you had to use a brand new chest. You couldn't place it down in order to place it on your mule or llama. So they fixed that. That was pretty cool. And then there's been other fixes for blocks. Underwater plants can now be placed in water columns that originate from the top water source blocks. Uh, stuff like that. Kelp now mimics seagrass. Kelp that was planted by players will now grow over time, which I thought I thought they did do that. So I'm not quite sure what that was. Observers will now detect changes with droppers, dispensers, brewing stands, farmland, saplings, sugarcane, fire, and grass blocks. Again, I thought that was something that they were already doing because we made a sheep uh, wool farm where the observers detect the change when the sheep eat the grass and converts into a dirt block. Uh, the observer was detecting that, so I'm not quite sure what that applies to, but they fixed it, so it must have been something. So those are just a few of the things I wanted to touch base on. Again, you can check out the list for yourself. Uh, it's quite long, so I just wanted to point out the main features and then a couple highlights that I wanted to point out personally. Now, thankfully, there hasn't been any changes to redstone that I can see. The only thing that they changed for redstone is that you can see redstone through the side of the glass. So that was an issue. If you were standing on the side of a glass block, you can you couldn't see the redstone on top, which was really weird, uh, but I guess they fixed that so you can see redstone from all sides of the glass. So that's just a few things, like I said, I wanted to cover. And there you have it, everyone. A brief overview of the new features in version 1.6.0. Again, phantoms and barrier blocks. Very awesome, as you can see right here. And then, of course, there is that whole extensive list that I was mentioning. With that being said, this is the end of our video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Rogue Fox, and I'm out. I'll see you later. Whoops, I broke it.